So today I'm going to be asking a question that doesn't really have an answer and can really go either way, but I want to talk about it anyways. And that question is, does package count actually matter? So if we take a look at my current system setup, and I'm running OpenSUSE Tumbleweed as part of my challenge, and I have a current package count of 3,351 packages. That is a literal metric ton of packages. Now, I will be honest with you, and I have a ton of stuff installed. Now, first off, I'm a Linux YouTuber, so I try a lot of applications. I try window managers. I try all sorts of things that contribute to that package count. So one of the reasons why my package count is so much higher than a lot of people's is because of that reason. Also, I'm very not good at removing packages when I'm done with them. I, oftentimes I'll try something and then it just kind of lingers on there forever. And, you know, it just kind of stays there and I forget about it until it eventually causes me problems, which I'll talk about later. So the question I have to ask is, does that matter? Does package count matter? Because there are, are two ends of the spectrum here. There are people who like who are like me who have a ton of packages installed. Uh, maybe you have more packages than I do, or maybe you have around the same, or you have your tw you have 2,000 or 2,500 or whatever. Or there's uh, people on the other end of the spectrum who are very prideful of their minimalism, right? They have, you know, 500 or 600 or 700 packages installed, and that's it. And they are very diligent on deleting things that they don't need, on installing programs that they don't need, and they're very happy and very prideful over the fact that their package count is very low. So the questions I have to ask today, first off, does package count actually matter? And if it does, what role does package count actually matter or not? So, for example, does it actually make your Linux experience worse to have a ton of packages? And the other question that I want to ask today is why does package count seem to differ based on what distribution you're going to use? So that's the one we're going to actually tackle first. Why, why can I use something like OpenSUSE or Debian and have a significantly higher package count than if I use Arch or even Fedora? And the answer to that question is that distributions count packages differently. And it seems for pretty obvious when I say it out loud, but that's really the bare bones explanation over why package counts can significantly differ on two different distributions. So let's posit a scenario, shall we? You're using a brand new version of Debian Bookworm with GNOME installed on it. You've just installed it. You have all of the base GNOME applications that they install by default, and you're, you've just turned the computer on for the first time. You have a Arch-based distribution or an Arch installation, also has GNOME installed on it, has the exact same GNOME packages on it, installed on it. And the, functionally, the, besides the fact that one uses Pac-Man and one uses apt and they both use obviously different repositories functionally they're exactly the same however if you were to go in and look at the package counts you'd find that the debian system has 17 to 1800 packages installed out of the box whereas the arch system probably has near to 600 or 700 packages installed why is that a significant difference why does that difference actually exist when the, the systems themselves are functionally the same well it goes back to the simplistic explanation i just gave Debian counts packages differently than Arch does. Even though technically they have the same packages installed, because GNOME's going to use the same dependencies no matter what distribution you're going to use it on, Debian counts dependencies, hard and soft dependencies differently and tends to be more picky over what is actually counted. And they also package things in a different way. So a lot of things that are a group on Arch and are counted as one package are counted as 10 or 15 packages on Debian. And that's just kind of the way they do it. It doesn't mean there's one right way or one wrong way. It's just kind of the way it is. And that explains why you can run Arch as a more minimal, quote unquote, minimal distro than you can on Debian. Now, you can cut those packages down on Debian, but in my experience, the Debian guys are always going to have a higher package count than Arch. Now, if you were to just look at the situation on that explanation alone, you would say that package count does not matter. Because if packages are counted in different ways, then the Debian install of GNOME and the Arch install of GNOME are equally minimal, but the package counts are just kind of 
there, right? They're exactly the same, but the package counts may di be different, so they therefore don't matter because they're ac actually the same. But there's actually more, of course, to it, and that goes to the second question of what problems come along when you don't care about package count, like I don't. So if you just go about your Linux career, your Linux install, and just install stuff willy-nilly like I do, and don't uninstall things that you don't use, and you just you keep accruing more and more stuff on your system, you're going to eventually have some problems, or at least the potential for problems start to emerge. And those problems usually come to the point where you have to start updating these things. So if you frequently update your system, the more stuff you have to install, the more updates there are going to be. The more updates that you have, the more likely one of those updates is going to cause you issues. Even if you no longer use the program in question, an update can come down and cause your system problems. This is what's known, at least, this is one area of what's known as technical debt. So the longer you use your machine and don't do the maintenance on it, and that means kind of pulling out the cruft that just of the stuff that you don't need, you're going to start accruing a lot of technical debt, and that debt can come back to haunt you as problems arise simply because it exists. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to. You can have 10,000 packages on your machine and still just use it over, you know, as for as long as you want to, right? You could be very lucky and just never encounter a problem, or you could have 5,000 packages on your machine and eventually run into problems because of having pro uh, applications and libraries and stuff that you have to update, and then there's an update that boinks your computer. That, of course, doesn't mean that the people who are ultra-minimal don't also have problems when it comes to Linux. So they also have or have the potential to have problems from packages and updates and stuff as well. But they are less likely to have one come down because of a major update to some random package. Their, uh, their problems with updating usually comes from problems with the kernel and base packages that are absolutely necessary and would affect everyone no matter how many packages they have. So does package count actually matter? So the actual number... No, I, I will. I'm firmly of the belief that the actual number does not matter simply because what distribution you're on, you're going to have a different package count right at the base, right? Those numbers are going to be different because they count packages differently. So the actual number, I don't think actually matters because my 3,300 packages on OpenSUSE would probably be around 1,700 packages on Arch, right? It'd be about half, which would make those systems exactly the same, but the packages are but the package's counts are going to be different. So the idea there is that the number itself does not matter. But accruing a whole bunch of stuff over the course of your usage of your distro, your install life of your distro, can be negative towards your use of Linux over time. It doesn't mean that it will be, but it can be. It can cause some issues as those updates keep piling on and your, your, the config files start adding up and all of the libraries keep adding up and the new dependencies and the version numbers and all this stuff kind of start grinding against each other, you can come across a situation where it does cause some problems. So, what's the solution? Well, the solution is not to pay so much attention to the package count, but simply to pay attention to what's installed on your system, especially the things that you install yourself. So, any packages that you install, any applications that you install that you no longer need, uninstall them. But that's not always enough. You also have to make sure that the things that it installs along with it are also taken care of. So any extraneous dependencies should also be deleted if they can be. Now, I want to be very cautious here because deleting dependencies of applications can be dangerous. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> because a lot of times when you install something, even if it's installed after something else, it doesn't mean that things that weren't previously installed don't rely on that new package. For some ungodly reason, that happens. And when you uninstall a dependency, it may or may not warn you that there's a package somewhere on your system that relies on that dependency. And if you delete it, things break, right? So you want to be very, very cautious over what you actually delete and, uh, and uninstall. So the best solution for yourself is to always pay attention to what's being installed on your system when you're done with something if you know you're not going to use it again 
uninstall it, and then try your best to take those dependencies that you no longer need and delete them. Now, there are mechanisms for doing this on every distribution. Apt has auto remove. Pac-Man has some flags that you can use to remove unused dependencies. Zipper does. DNF does. Right. The problem is, of course, that they oftentimes also remove a lot of stuff that you do need. And you want to make sure that when you use those mechanisms that you read the output before you do any confirmation. Okay. So this is a good example of this, of course, is if you go back to the Linus Tech Tips Linux challenge from, I guess it's two years ago now, however long it's been. One of the th first things that Linus did wrong was that he did an auto remove on Pop! OS. And that actually ended up deleting everything. <laughs> like everything. It deleted, you know, GNOME, it deleted Xorg, it deleted everything. And it completely borked his system and he had to hop over to Manjaro because he didn't know how to fix it. Now, he could have prevented himself from that mess if he had read the output. So always, if you're going to use the mechanisms in place to delete packages uh, that were supposedly extraneous, read the output. Know exactly what you're deleting. And if it looks like you're deleting something that's important and that you probably still use, just don't delete it because you'd rather have the technical debt of having that thing installed than uninstalling it and find out that something else relies on it and you've broken your computer. So at the end of the day, package counts are both not important, but are also indicative of a problem that you do have to keep an eye on. Make sure you're keeping a thought towards what's on your computer, if there's anything there that you can get rid of, because over time... You're going to be doing yourself a favor if you know exactly what's there. And the fewer things that you have that can break your system on your, you know, any given day, probably the better. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you... The channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.